Howdy ho, you handsome hunk. Grab a snack and gain some chunk. If your day is great or really sunk, we hope to help you shake the funk. So if you're good to hear some junk, buckle up, it's the Junk Monk Podcast. Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Junk Monk Podcast. I'm your host, Candace Sloan, who you know from Instagram at Hardens and Hard Hats. And I'm Noah, your co host, who you know from right now. If this is your first time listening, let us fill you in. We are watching and reviewing every episode of the USA hit TV show Monk right here each week. And we're going to do so while eating a little bit of junk. So I've got my junk food here, which is actually very time sensitive. <laughs> Candace brought ice cream, and yeah, I mean, ice cream's like, oh, it'll melt. But I have a popsicle, people. I have a popsicle. This is going to be frustrating. It's actually a homemade pineapple lemonade yeah. popsicle. You know, the, the the stuff that you, like, put a little liquid in, and then you, like, put the top on, and then it freezes, and you take it out of the freezer? It's that, and it's pineapple and lemonade. Exactly. And I have some Bluebell ice cream cookie dough overload. If you have not tried this ice cream, delish. make sure you do... Or Cookie Two-Step is actually my favorite, which is cookies and cream and cookie dough mixed, but I have this one today. Yeah. Also, you must know I've seen every episode of Monk. I'm a huge fan, started watching it in about 2007, and for the most part, watched it as it aired. I've seen the pilot episode and those we've done on the show. A few scattered here and there in different seasons. So, if you're ready to start the show, Toby, take it away. Here's what happened. All right, this is Mr. Monk Makes a Friend, Season 5, Episode 11. Here's what happened. In the opening scene, we see a woman named Gail trying to convince her boyfriend to open a bottle of wine they purchased on vacation. He is adamant that she shouldn't open the bottle, and when she does, he becomes very angry. Then she discovers something inside the bottle, and upon that discovery, her boyfriend strangles her with a bath towel. Next, at the crime scene, Monk realizes that he knew the victim back when he was on the force, and they even carpool together and talk to vacations she was hoping to take someday. Meanwhile, Monk has made a new friend from the supermarket named Hal. He seems to be a very charming, friendly pal for Monk, but the rest of the gang is suspicious. One red flag about Hal is that he has done time for possession of stolen goods, but Monk overlooks this as he has his first friend. Although, we soon learn that he shouldn't, as we see Hal murdering his girlfriend Gail's ex-boyfriend. Soon after this, Hal has his last hangout session with Monk, and we know why. The entire time, he has been simply waiting for a piece of mail from Gale to Monk with Hal's photo inside. Monk pieces it together when he confronts Hal about ghosting him and goes to his apartment. Seeing the familiar wine bottle and other clues, he realizes Hal had killed Gale after he used her to smuggle stolen antiques in the wine bottles, then used him to find the letter. The captain and Randy burst into the apartment just in time to save Monk from his new foe. Good episode. Yeah, that was Mr. Monk. Makes a friend. Okay, I had a lot of likes. I had a lot of likes. Nice. I had a lot of likes. Monk, Monk, after meeting Hal at the grocery store, gets a call back, which, you know, catches Monk off guard. And, um... And Natalie. (laughs) And he's... And Natalie. He's talking to Hal on the phone. He's like, yeah, that was just my assistant that you were talking to because Natalie picked up the phone first. Mm -hmm. And he's like, uh, Natalie, wants to know if you're hot. Are you hot? (laughs) And then Randy, like a perv, is just looking at Natalie's butt. <laughs> that is so true. I was like, what? It's funny. I'm like, Randy never thought about if Natalie was hot or not. Mm-hmm. He was just like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I was waiting for him to say something. I'm kind of glad he didn't. Um, yeah, I have a lot of, I literally put a bullet point for every time. Monk got excited about Hal, and it was so cute. Uh So I'll just do a couple, since you might have them. Okay. He's super excited to go to the hockey game. Yeah. Right? And he studies up for it. And he has Natalie, like, quizzing him. And then whenever he's about to arrive at Monk's apartment, he's like, Julie, no, no, no classical music. Play the rock, you know, and the roll. And she's like, Mr. Monk, you don't have any rock and roll. And he's like, just, just find something, Julie. And then Hal comes into the kitchen and you hear, burr, 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 burr. <laughs> like, so the only non classical music Julie could find was the national anthem. And I thought that was funny. Hal goes, oh, I like it. Patriotic. <laughs> I love this. Is an, I think you overlooked this, but Stottlemyre and Monk at the beginning, they like, I don't think they solve a case. 
But Monk's like, well, obviously he did this and then this and then this. And he does a little movement with his hands as he said all of them. And so then him and Slottlemyre go like from and then. So they're both doing like and then this and then this and then this with their hands. He got out of the shower and then he took the towel and then he went in there. Uh And then I I thought that was a really cute moment. That was a good catch. Slottlemyre was like kind of channeling his inner monk. Uh He's like, man, you're good with the toilet seat down. (laughs) (laughs) That was funny. Another little monk moment is, of course, he wants to basically propose to Hal and ask him if he'll be his best friend. Aww, and that's aww. so cute. He's trying to pop the question. He is. And then I also like this was a little one where he's trying to impress Hal at the crime scene. Well, not really trying to impress him, but he takes him there. And oh, he's yeah. like, yeah, this is pretty cool, huh? And he's like, yeah, it's great. And Monk's so cute because he's like, it's mm-hmm. pretty cool, huh? I'm like, it's sad because Hal was there. Because he did the murder. Monk is so cool. He is. But he is, though. That's, uh, yeah. He could totes make a friend. Exactly. I think so, too. It's just sad, you know? Monk is happy. That's just an overall like. Yeah. When he calls Dr. Kroger, and I guess Dr. Kroger answers the phone, and he's like, he said yes. Like, yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. When Monk's talking to Natalie, and, he, and I guess the rest of the gang, they're like, are you sure he's not trying to, like, con you or scan you? He's like, guys, No. I've been praying every Christmas for a new best friend. And I was like, aww. When he's lounging on the couch and he's waiting for the phone call and he's, you know, he's like oh. a teenage girl basically on his stomach uh-huh. and with his little legs up in the air and he's like waiting. He's like, oh, and then he answers the phone and he's like, hello. <laughs> and then it's Julie's friend, Bonnie. He's like, it's for you. <laughs> so sad. Um, I have I have a few more actually. Okay. All of Monk's friends don't trust Hal, which is so sweet. They want to keep little Monk safe, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when Julie tries to give Monk some, <laughs> oh God, <laughs> some tips, right? And he's he, she's like, Mr. Monk, the same thing like happened to two girls at my school. The way she solved it was she tattled on one of the other girls, and told everyone that she wet her bed. And Monk's like, oh. Thanks, Julie. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's <laughs> and then later, and then later, Monk sees Hal hanging out with another guy, or like I don't know who it was, right? But he's like, "Well, I'm I'm just as good as him." Hmm? Well, well, how how what's his bed? Okay. <laughs> he totally does say that. It's hilarious. Oh, and also, um, like you said, when Bonnie, Julie's friend, answers the phone instead of Hal, she's like, "I can't talk right now." My mom's boss is crying. <laughs> and also, Monk got skills, Candace. Do you remember when he has the gun pulled on him? And so oh. Monk grabs something expensive from behind him, throws it up in the air, knowing that Hal would try to catch it, and then takes the gun and pulls it on him, which he eventually does lose the gun because Hal, like, messes, manipulates, manipulates him, him yeah. right? So, yeah, Monk Monk got mad skills with the gun, and Stottlemyre and Randy... Care about Monk at the end when they save him. Mm hmm. It's so cute. Yeah, I do. I have the gun moment too, but also the first moment I was like, oh, good. Monk's standing up for himself when he confronts Hal, like in the mm-hmm. foyer that you're talking about. And he says, I will not be toyed with. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, he's standing up for himself. But then he gets manipulated again. Yeah. And then he does the cool gun trick and then he gets manipulated again. So, but I did like that he tried to at least twice at some point stand up for himself so you can tell he's not like a total sucker i guess yeah and then also to go off the other thing that you were saying with everyone just trying to protect him yeah i do i really like that they kind of say rude things you know where you're kind of like wow i think randy makes a comment about oh that phone call i thought it was a prank and you're yeah. like oh that's rude but still I feel like the way that they were saying those things maybe comes off a little bit rude, but they were being genuine and that Randy was like, oh, I really, I thought it was a prank. And how when Natalie answers the phone, she's like, you're looking for Adrian Monk? Like, this is Adrian Monk's phone. Are you sure? What number are you calling? Mm-hmm. And then Stottlemyre comes in with the, so you sure he's not scamming you? Has he ever asked you for money? So again, like those things kind of maybe sound rude, but... They're all really just trying to protect him. And so, yeah, I really like that. Yeah, it's really cute. All right, Noah, what did you dislike about this episode? So, last episode of the podcast, I said, oh, man, at least 
it wasn't cute, oblivious monk who was getting punked. Yeah, like taking advantage a, of you. Yeah. That's exactly what happened this episode. Mm-hmm. I jinxed us. I know. I have the same thing. Last episode was subtle taking advantage of, and this was outright taking advantage yeah. of, and it was really sad. But once we know that Hal is bad, it's, like, even worse. Uh-huh. You know, which, I mean, I guess I knew that Hal was bad, but, you know, they always do, like, foreshadowing. So, at some point, you kind of figure, like, there's something up with this guy, but it just makes it worse after you know that he's bad. Because then, instead of being kind of hopeful for Monk and maybe just, like, a little bit oblivious like he is, like, oh my gosh, he's so cute, they're going to the hockey game, like, oh my gosh... And then after that, all those really cute things, like when he's going to ask him to be his best friend, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, Monk, no, don't. He's a bad guy. So, you know what I mean? So it's like, again, this tone changes of like, well, never mind. Yeah. Not funny anymore, which it still is, you know, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Another thing would be Monk getting manipulated again after the gun. Mm-hmm. And... Like, it was so sad because the guy's, like, pulling a gun on him. And then Monk does this really awesome move. And you're like, yeah, Monk, get your revenge. And then how Hal's just so mean and manipulative. And is like, come on, buddy. I would never say that. I was just saying that, you know, because of whatever. And just keeps going until yeah. Monk is like, yeah, okay. Oh, he uses rock polishing against him. And he's like, yeah. He's like oh, yeah, we can go back to your apartment and, and polish some rocks. And looks like, okay, because he really believed that he liked it. Oh, and he starts going off like, are you kidding? Spending a day with you is like pulling teeth, and it's terrible. And I was like, okay, you use this guy, and then you're going to go. You know how sometimes like you see, I know he's a bad guy, but you know how you see in a movie where someone's hanging out with somebody for a different reason, and then they end up actually kind of liking them? Mm -hmm. Technically, they probably could have done that. Like, we had fun, sorry, but I gotta kill you now. Instead of saying something like you that. Suck, I hate you. Yeah. Like, you use this guy and you're just being hateful and mean and hurting his feelings. And then two seconds later, manipulating him again. So yeah. sad. That, I, I didn't like that at all. No, no, no. Hal is kind of right in the end. He's like, at least I don't treat him like a detective robot and. A funny, quirky boss who I can make fun of behind his back. And I was like, aw. Yeah, I thought the same thing. I thought the exact same thing. He made good points. And, Uh, like, you don't want to see him that way. And you, I mean, you really know that they don't 100% see him that way. But mostly on an everyday, average basis, mm -hmm. that is how they use him and see him. But at the end, they do... Go and hang out with him. Or are they... Yeah, that, Natalie does. That's true. I actually put... Everyone thinks that Monk is so intolerable all the time, but he does stuff all the time that he doesn't want to do uh-huh. to fit in or just to do... Like, you know, Natalie's all the time, Mr. Monk, you have to do this. Come on, you have to do this. And he goes out of his comfort zone all the time yeah. to do things that, yeah, maybe other people think are normal and are like, God, oh, why, why is that guy such a weirdo? It's like, but you have to look at it from his perspective, too. He doesn't want to go to a hockey game. He wants a friend. So he's going to the hockey game because his friend wants to go to the hockey game. I think it was, was it, I think it was last week, too, when Mr. Monk doesn't want to help the leper. And Natalie's like, hey, Mr. Monk, you're no picnic to work with sometimes either. But people, you know, help you or they talk to you. And you can't treat the leper that way just because he's a leper. And... Here we go again. People thinking Monk is intolerable, except for yeah. he's the one that goes out of his way to be nice to Hal, too. That's true. So. That's true. Mm-hmm. Also, Monk, at the end, doesn't have a friend at all, and is back to square one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I did think that it was sweet that Natalie invited him to the volleyball game, but also it seemed like, which, I mean, it seemed like, because it, it was true, and I guess this is the part that I didn't like, was... She took to heart what Hal had said. Like, you don't hang out with him just because. You don't take him anywhere just because. And she's like, oh, he's right. And then so whenever she's like, oh, do you want to go to the Disney on Ice with me? And he's like, well, why? She's like, because we're friends. And he's like, oh, okay, sure. Like, it's almost like the statement was 
almost disingenuine just uh-huh. because, you know what I mean? It was it was like guilted. She felt guilted to say yeah. that. Even if she meant it, it just kind of came off that way. It was I it was a, it was a really like eye-opening episode as far as the relationships that Monk actually has in his life. Uh what do you have anything else? No, I think I'm actually done. I have one more. Okay. Randy's just rude to Monk at the beginning. When? Oh, I thought it was a prank. Shut up, Randy. Shut right, up. yeah. Um, yeah. He's, he's the, the guy. guy. All right, Candace, what do you have for he's the guy? Okay, you have nobody, right? Be on, be on. No. Okay. Please. So, I have one person. That's basically it. Hal Tucker. He's played he by... Familiar. Yeah, he's played by Andy Richter. Uh, I did look up his credits because I was like, he's... To me, right? I'm like, everyone I think is so famous. Like, to me. I'm uh-huh. like, oh my gosh, this guy's super famous. I think he's fairly famous. He was a voice on Madagascar on, like, tons of things, like the TV show and the movie. Uh-huh. He was on an episode of Fresh Off the Boat, Blackish, Bob's Burgers. But he is most known for, in my opinion, for being on Conan, right? He's, like, Conan's announcer and where he stands uh-huh. on the side. And he plays himself, like, he, Conan calls him Andy, like, that's his name. If you haven't seen Conan, it's, like, Guillermo to Jimmy Kimmel. Mm-hmm. If you've seen Jimmy Kimmel, you know, that's who he is to Conan. So, he has been, I don't know if Conan is still on the air, but he's been his little sidekick like that for 10 years. Since 2010. I think I remember that. So, yeah. and then also, what I recognize him from, because I honestly don't watch Conan, or didn't, but... I know him from Elf, and he plays Morris on Elf, which is, if you haven't seen Elf, which a lot of people have, but I don't think you have. I have haven't. You? He hasn't seen Elf, so you're thinking, what? No, I didn't recognize him from Elf. He hasn't seen it. So he plays Morris, who is one of the writers at the publishing company of The Father, and he's the one that pitches a book about tomatoes, and like they, they are pitching children's stories. And he pitches a story about, like, a tomato on a farm. And the guy's like, no, no tomatoes, no farm or whatever. And then there's another guy, which this is Andy Richter's line, but it's one of my favorite lines ever. I don't know why. But there's this bald guy in there, and uh, he says, what if we write a book about a family of asparagus who are self-conscious about the way their pee smells? Because asparagus makes your pee smell weird. And so <laughs> that was his pitch for the book. And so it's they're, they're like a tag team, Andy Richter and that guy. Uh-huh. So I was like, oh, I wish that was his line. But I'll say it anyway because I love that line. Okay. Um, and then a little a little uh, one degree here. Amy Sedaris, who plays Gail Fleming, mm-hmm. is on Elf. And I didn't realize it. When I looked up the clip, she was in it. And I was like, oh, yeah, that is Amy Sedaris. Who, whenever Buddy the Elf gets to New York and goes to find his father, she's the receptionist that says, oh, are you a Christmas gram? And he's like, ooh, what's a Christmas gram? And she's like, confused, like, um, you know, because Buddy doesn't know he's an elf or uh, he doesn't know he's a human. So, so yeah, I thought that was interesting. I was like, oh, two monk people right here in this one scene. Interesting. So that was my little elf Full circle moment there. Very full circle moment. Okay, anything else? Um, no, that's it. Okay. Junk time. All right, everybody, welcome back to my favorite time and yours in the show, where I eat junk and Candace asks me questions. Here's the thing. My junk is all done. Yeah, it's he's been slurping on it the whole time. It's You can probably hear it during, like, the here's what happened. Yeah, and I, I had a couple of bites of my ice cream before I had to put it back in the freezer because it was melty. Yeah. <laughs> so, here's my first question for junk time. Have you ever asked anyone to be your best friend? No. Have you ever asked anyone to just be your friend? I'm sure if I was when I was younger. Like, is that so, that I was just... Like thinking, is it something that you ask or is it something that just happens? It just happens. Right? Like, but you see like on TV shows or movies, like not Monk, you know, but like little kids like, do you want to be friends? Okay. Or, you know, or uh, will you yeah. be my friend? Sure. 
or no. <laughs> like, all yeah. right. But yeah, I've never, I've never asked anyone to be my friend. I can't think of any instances. Hey, do you want to be friends? But I will say that in elementary school, I had a group of four friends. Remember, we were the reptiles. Uh, oh. And we can go for miles, baby. <gasps> oh, yeah. Old reference. We had a friendship constitution. And so we wrote, like, the whole preamble of, like, you know, the U.S. Constitution. Like, uh-huh. we the people, of, we like, we the friends of this group oh, or something. Gosh. And we had, like, rules for being friends. It works. It was like, you know, how they say, like, oh, dude, bro code. And you're like, yeah, we had that. It was well, a real. All dudes off bro, bro code. Right, but it's an unwritten bro code. And I wish I could find it. I bet I could. I, I bet it's somewhere at my mother's house, but I would have to dig dig real deep for that one. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, my second question is, name something or some things that you would want your friends to do with you that they're just not that into. Hmm. And vice versa. Watch the monk, you know? <laughs> I will, that, that is a big one, not gonna lie. Like... When they, when they ask me what I'm up to, and I'm Just like, oh, I watch Monk all the time and edit my podcast and work on my podcast, and they're like, uh, oh, that's cool, because they don't know what Monk is or don't like it, and I'm uh-huh. like, if you only knew know, right? how awesome the Monk is and how of the Monk community. awesome we are <laughs> and how I awesome our so podcast cool. is, if you only knew people, come on. Exactly. But do you have anything anything else? Uh, this is going to sound lame. They just play different video games than me. Mm. The only person who plays it is who plays the same video game as me is one person, right? And everyone else plays Fortnite while me and him play Minecraft with a bunch of random people and we're, we just mm. have fun, right? Yeah. And so it would just be so cool if they... Which Fortnite's free, but Minecraft costs money. Oh. So it's like some of them do have it but prefer to play with other people. So I'm like, fine, stay that way. Mm. But it'd be cool if we, like, all got to play together. Yeah. Which, Fortnite, you can't even do that. Like, what the heck? It's singular. I know. It's singular. What's up with that? That is weird. Yeah, because when we're all hanging out, you can't just play Fortnite. It's, we have to watch someone play Fortnite. Yeah. Like, that's so weird. That is really weird. I don't know. Besides, besides my podcast, I don't know. I'm into, I don't know. Also, I don't have that many friends. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really into, like, woodworking and stuff. Oh, yeah. And so that would be... She makes, like, tables. And that would be kind of cool if... And we use the tables. <laughs> yeah. We do use the tables. <laughs> I don't know. That'd be cool to, like, either teach somebody that or... I've never seen you actually do any of that because, like, we leave and then we come back, like, two weeks later. Like, oh, there's a brand, brand new table. Oh, there's a show. Oh, there's a <laughs> yeah. thing. There's another thing. Yeah, so... I don't know. It's it is. I mean, obviously, it's fun to do by yourself too, or else you know wouldn't do it. But it yeah. is more fun. Like the last project I built was a tag team. Like I built the top, and someone else built the bottom. And so it was like we were both working on it at the same time. It took half the amount of time, and then we had a table, and we also had a good time making it. And so that'd be fun. Woodworking, woodworking as a team. Dang, that's true. Do you have any more junk time questions? Okay. What about the opposite? Is there anything that your friends are oh. into that you're, if they asked you, you Fortnite. do it because you're a good <laughs> friend? I don't even play no. Fortnite. And I don't even do that because I'm a good friend. I'm a sucky friend now that I think about it. Yeah, something that maybe not necessarily, maybe your friends don't ask you to do it because they're like, yeah, they're not into that. Mm. Like what about, is there any like sports that your friends play that you're like, yeah, don't. So that's not my favorite sport or, See, like, clubs or... Our our friend group is, like, so big. There's, like, ten of us. There's a lot of us, mm-hmm. right? Five or six of us who are, like, built like me or, like, tiny. Or not tiny, but just not, like... Just not like we giant. Do, we can <laughs> play football with them, and it, it is fun. We still like it. But it's also, like, we prefer to play four square. Oh, because it's just more fun. <laughs> Tether ball. Uh, yeah. It's <laughs> badminton. I don't know about... Jeez, now you're just making fun of me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Me. I just, that's just what I thought of whenever I thought Four of it. fun, though. There's, like, and then, like, we have rules and, like, we're, like, when we play football, it's, like, oh, let's throw around this poo. 
pigskin. I sold his pigskin. <laughs> like what? <laughs> I can't think of anything if my friend called me up and said, hey, do you want to go here? I feel like I mostly have things in common with them. Oh. Uh-huh. Or I just don't have any friends that would call me and ask me that. <laughs> yeah. So it's just sad too. I will say though that I'm not super into like getting my nails done and my oh, hair yes. done. I would be down to, for like, hey, do you want to go get massages? I'd be like, oh, sorry. I love massages. But like, who doesn't? Getting like nails and hair done, not, that's not something that I, I again, I definitely would do it. I do it with them, but it's not something, I'm not going to call you and ask you if you want to do that. That would be vice versa. Uh huh. So. so, what if you could call someone right now? Call someone right now. What? <laughs> do it and be like, hey, what do you think I like? And be like, I don't know, we haven't talked in six years. <laughs> and that's why we'll not be calling anyone. <laughs> like, for one, it's quarantine, so we're not going anywhere. That's and true. for two, I haven't talked to you in like three months, so this is a weird question. Quarantine's yeah. real spooky. I'm sorry, I just wanted a way to use that. All right. Is that all for Chung John? It is. Aww. Plot holes. Okay, welcome back to not my favorite time. Okay, my first one is eggs break when they fall on the ground at the supermarket where he has 10 eggs in his carton. Yeah, but they're Egg. cushion. With what? With, I don't know, cushion stuff. No, the eggs fell on the ground. And the first thing that I saw was the egg carton and I was like, Ooh, those eggs are done for. Nope, they're still intact. I have personally dropped two different sets of eggs before in my lifetime. And one was right when we were buying them. We went to the car and I don't even know what happened. I just, I, that was like almost like all we bought. We bought like bread and eggs. Uh-huh. And they were in my hand and I just, I think I went for the car door. And so when I o- opened my hand up, they just whoosh, and it was probably what like two feet off the ground, so it wasn't even like I wasn't even like holding them up really high. They felt like maybe like a foot and a half, and every single egg broke. And I was like, "Dang it!" And then I broke them another time, but it was after that, so I was like, eh, "I've done that before." <laughs> it wasn't like, oh. um, my next one is, I don't think Monk has ninety nine other shirts. Remember when he said, "Oh, I have a hundred others just like this." Well, now ninety nine. Because in the fashion show, he didn't was he shopping say, for some. He was shopping for some because how many? How many would you think? I think he said a number. Like he's like Natalie, I have to get these shirts. I'm down to my last. Like, I don't know. I don't know. We'd have to check. I thought he said like ten or so. I'm pretty sure yeah. he didn't say we're wasn't shopping a high number. because we want 99 shirts. Yeah, no. And then also, I have more extra extras. What do you mean? Do you remember any extras in the show that were being a little extra? No. At the hockey game, (gasps) they were looking around like you can tell where the action is supposed to be because Monk and Hal are looking that way. And then all these fans around them are like looking, looking left and looking right and looking up and looking to the side and looking at each other. And like where for the most part. If you're watching a game, everyone's head is in one general direction because yeah. they're all watching Moving the action. Together. But these people were all like cross, 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 cross. Like they probably didn't give them any type of direction of like where the action was. But you could just look at the main actors, right? And be like, oh, they're looking this way. Uh-huh. But these people didn't do that. They were like, so yeah. And then my next thing is, where did they get those? Hard hats with the shark logo on them. They they had to from the got, gift shop. Right, they had to have got that from the gift shop, but Monk makes it seem like, oh sorry about that and how's yeah, like Yeah, but they no, just yeah, have it's... they just have like I have a little cowboys like a hard hat. Hard hat. Okay. Even though we're we live in San Francisco, me and Candace. Right. So <laughs> Right. I'm ju- I'm just saying like we live in Wisconsin people. I'm saying that I guess so I guess it's not really a plot hole. So there's a there's a hard hat in the gift shop and they went to get them and Monk was saying sorry because he was making them wear them for the actual game and not for hard hats, like real hard hats. It's just merchandise. 
I just thought it was everyone weird. Everyone can agree on that. Literally everyone. You've been... Wait. You've been... Okay, so I have <laughs> one more plot hole. Alrighty. And this is the only other time besides the last episode that I will call it a plotty. Because Why? it is a stotty plotty. Which is a plot hole which contains Captain Sotomayor. No way. So, so I will have stotty plotties from now on. That is so cool. And this one is... I wish I was as creative as Candace. He's playing with the gun. Why is he playing with a murder weapon at his uh, desk? Like, he's not examining it. I guess he's, it was discharged. Who, what, on what planet is the murder like, they weapon? they don't need it anymore. They don't need it anymore. There was obviously a murder. It wasn't like, oh, this was an accident. Release the evidence. This was an ongoing murder investigation. He's like swirling it around with no gloves on. Like, so you're telling me after they dust something like that, like, okay, we have all the prints, and then they don't lock it into evidence. They just have it out of the bags. Anybody can touch it and do whatever they want with it with evidence? No, but he's the captain. I know, but he's not a CSI person. I don't know. That's my study plot for the day. That's it. Debunked. Hey, did you like that? No, I didn't like it. Dang it! All Work. right. Toby's working hard, Candace. Um, well, Toby is an ignorant. <gasps> where's it, Where's the beep sound? I wish we had that. I wish. Ah, uh, I don't know. Uh, Toby, Toby gives me the directions, Candace. I'm not. I'm trying. I'm. Never mind. I'm done with. How, How crazy, crazy was Monk this episode? episode? Plus crazy moments. Um. I got a lot. I wrote, I wrote down quite a many. Nice. Okay, out of ten what? Out of ten tickets to Disney on Ice. Out of ten strategically placed food crumbs. Mmm, that was a good. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> oh. Um, number one. Monk wants the toilet seat down. Yes. He bubble wraps his apples. He doesn't want the pen that Stottlemyre used to close the toilet seat back. He does not want the back. Oh, that's true. He studies for his date with Hal. He throws away his groceries after kind of lying to Hal, like walking away. <laughs> he, of course, leaves out five crumbs. He wants to know when to pop the question. He has only classical music and the national anthem. He accuses Hal of wetting his bed. He loves their seats at the hockey game. They're really bolted in. I just got that joke. <laughs> I didn't hear that. That's funny. Monk cries after two days of not seeing Hal. With a mouthful of crackers. <laughs> I put cracker crying. <laughs> Monk wants to hang, you know, out. Uh, that's all I have. He's on the phone like a teenage girl. That's a good one. And he wants to invite Hal over if he makes bail. Oh, wait. He was just bunking Natalie. <laughs> that one's good. <laughs> that was it. So, out of ten tickets to Disney on Ice, I think he is a six out of ten. All right. So, he obviously is a little crazy, right? Most of our moments are about his friendship with Hal. But to yes. be fair, he's never had a friend before. So he doesn't know how to act and he's overwhelmed with excitement. And he's an oblivious monk, cute monk, adorable monk. So out of 10 strategically placed food crumbs, I will give him the five that he left out. Five done. Rate this episode. All right, Candace. Out of ten, what would you rate this episode? Well, out of two tens, right? It's been a while for the people. Oh, Gotta wait. go over my scale just a little bit. You do the two tens still? Yeah, I do the two tens every time. Because Jeez. every Monk episode is amazing, right? So each episode deserves at least a ten. And... So the lowest score that you could possibly give an episode is a 10, right? The highest is two 10s. Oh and so that's how I 
use my little rating scale here because that's the way Monk would want it. Okay. So my sentiments are, this is a really great episode. Okay. It's really funny. And we get to see Oblivious Monk as sad as it may end up being. And it all works out in the end because Monk does have friends that really love him. So I'm going to give this episode a 10.85. Ah, oh, close yeah. to me, close to me. Okay. So, going off of what Candace said, this was a great episode. This was this was fun. This it wasn't it wasn't um, black film noir fun, which wasn't a good episode. I mean, it was it was all right, but it wasn't as fun as that. I'm giving it a eight out of ten. Okay. Because it's just different, and like as cool it is as it is to be like. Oh, last episode, classic monk episode with the whole sneaking in and plot twist, plot twist, plot twist. This is like more of we see character development. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Did you like this episode better than Meets His Dad? Mm, yes. I think so. I, yeah. Safe to say, yeah. I, th I think I do. Yeah, this was a really good one. Um, I did write down 9 out of 10. I was going to give it a 9 out of 10. But, alas, it is only an 8. <laughs> alas, it is only an 8. So, I got to change this. Because, at the recap... Yeah. We don't want to have to do all that scrolling for what you actually said it was. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, this one is... It's kind of interesting. And the mystery is not too bad either. When did you figure out what he was there for? When he checks the mail, right? Well, I, was, I always had my suspicions. Well, like about how, but about the letter? About the mail? Oh, oh, no, I didn't know what that Like, was. you didn't know about the mail until he gets the mail and he opens that letter. Yeah, that's right? true. Right? So, true. the mystery, they besides them showing how killing the guy, then you're like, oh, man, he's bad. But besides that, you didn't really know why he's there until he pulls the envelope out and then... And then everything gets started. Yeah. And, yeah. So Good episode. Not bad. Big round of applause, everyone. Yay. <laughs> yeah, yay. All Toby right. has gotten actually really good, guys. He always has... Where's my beat button? I, I mean, I give him a little, like, like, sign about what I'm about to do. And then he... And then he, he has it on the spot, which I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him. Before he would mess up, and now he's... Candace doesn't agree with me, but I think he's good. I never do. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go eat my ice cream because it is calling my name. For real. Freezer. And we're also, do you guys know what Jackbox is? It's really fun. It's basically, so you got your, your traditional uh, board game, right? Except you can play it on like a computer or like a TV or like an Xbox, right? And, it, and all you have to do is go to jackbox.tv on, like, your phone or whatever, and it'll put you in, and you just have to put in your, like, group's code. It's not it, free. I will say it's yeah, not, it's it's not free. Yeah, it's not free. But we got a good deal on it because we already have Xbox Live, and so we only had to pay a dollar for it. Yeah. But it's really, really fun, and basically, you just got to, like, it sends things to all of your phones, and you, like, play from your phone or, like, tablet or laptop. And we're about to go play that. And we're, we're excited. Yeah. It's about to be Andy a lot of fun. Andy Night Stream. Yeah. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, give... Uh, Candace always forgets about this, but give no, no. a kiss. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. Bye. bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to the Junk Monk Podcast. We'd love to hear from you, so please give us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, follow us at Junk Monk Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. If you want to know more about Candice, she's at Hardens and Hard Hats on Instagram. And if you want to know more about me, Noah L., subscribe to my vlog, Noah Hernandez, on YouTube. Also, you can leave us a voicemail at 323-366-0477 with your questions, comments, or just to show us some love. Don't forget to catch up on Monk with Amazon Prime Video, and of course, subscribe to our show. You'll thank me later.